What's up Machine Freaks, 3D Machines here. Hope you guys are feeling froggy fresh. Today's video is going to be longer and a little bit more extensive. I wanna dive into what I used to do years ago. And I'm also shooting on a different camera today. This is what we're working on. Like two and a half, three years ago, I always used to work on mowers. I always used to work on like a whole bunch of different stuff that people would bring me and then I'd fix it. Well, that's exactly what I wanna do here, but I wanna do like an extensive thing to document the whole process just for something different. So this is obviously a Craftsman mower. I think it's a 42 inch deck. It has a brand new battery in it. It did not come with a battery when I purchased it. I purchased this mower, it originally was for $100. I got it for $75 and then got a snowblower with it. So with both of them together, I paid $140. Didn't have the battery. And supposedly the rod, the connecting rod broke. So I was like, okay, well I have another engine at home so I could just swap them out, right? The engine already runs. Well, I did that. That's the engine that's currently in here. But now the issue is, is this one smokes. This is, what, what even is this? A 19 horse. Um, oh, it's a T220. Zero. zero. All it is is a single cylinder Briggs & Stratton with all those fancy plastics on. Briggs & Stratton hasn't done anything totally different other than the location of the vacuum, which I will show you that once we get down to it. But this one is smoking. The other one had a broken connecting rod. That was confirmed. That engine is sitting right here. I have a glove in the exhaust and I have a glove in the intake. What I'm talking about with the vacuum is on the one that I put in there, the vacuum I think comes somewhere out of the engine, somewhere out here where this one is right here. So what I think the issue is, is the piston rings are just shot because the engine that I put in is older than the other one and it had a bad uh, carburetor seat and needle so gas was going from the carburetor leaking into the engine over time and then you know with that gas in the oil and then if you ran it at all it just was wearing it differently so you guys usually see me always breaking stuff well believe it or not I fix stuff and then it doesn't break so that's nice or somebody else can break it how's that then there's two bolts on the back of here can't really get an automated tool in behind there, so you gotta get the old wishbone out and wish it off. And then one 5 16 or flathead screwdriver in the air filter box, just to you know make it a little bit more complicated for you, so that you know if you don't know what you're doing, you break something. Before I go any further, I guess I should show you how it runs, how smoky it is. My next step was going to be taking the exhaust off, but since I just ran it, it's going to be hot. So I'm going to take off the four bolts down here and the this guy right here. All I'm doing is pinching the belt around the pulley and then twisting the wrench. like that it's off. and this one actually will come off I've had some that I literally could not even take off heat I mean pound in it you just you had a just a piece that was all twisted it, it wasn't even recognizable after I was done with it a few of them have done that to me this one for whatever reason likes me
engine bolts off, and three of them are relatively easy, but the fourth one just isn't fun. So hopefully that last one cooperates. I found when I put the, the tractor up like this, I can kind of get my face under there in a little bit more of a sketchy situation and get it off. So I know I'm probably going to get questions about the giveaway and stuff. The giveaway, um, as you guys know, no, ended September 6th for uh, the Instigator, the KTM, and Cru or, uh, Crush, uh, the Honda. And the winner will be um, chosen like the next week. We're just backordered on the team or the USA t-shirts. Once those go out, then we can announce the winner. And then... Uh, get you out here and have a really good time but if you guys don't know there's also another giveaway at machinemerch.com or 3dmachines.co we're giving away a GoPro and all the accessories well that was the hard one. Oh, nuts Like, what the heck, man? That thing wasn't joking. This thing's got some steering crew. Holy cow. That's yeah, number four. Now the engine's unmounted from its chassis. Now you just got to disconnect the wires. We got a little bit of oil down there from spillage from earlier, then no big deal. Clean that right up. One, uno. Two, uno, uno. I don't like when they do that. There's two nuts on that starter. One to kind of hang on to the starter and the other one's to hang on to the wire. And when both of them move, it's not very fun. I don't like it. But that one, since I took it off once, it cooperated the second time. Always take care of your nuts, ladies and gentlemen. Check out what I just learned. If you pull up on this thing, it comes right off. That's sweet. So you can get out to all the linkages and stuff without having to totally be secluded. So that was, what did I just take off? Some sort of vacuum line or something to the fuel. This is our choke slash throttle off. Gas line is the only thing I think left to off. Oh, Using my favorite pair of vice grips, take this sucker right off. Love these things. Absolutely love them. I accidentally left them outside a couple days ago, and now they're rusty. But, rusty or crusty, still love them. It's kind of like the ugly kid in the family, right? Your parents don't necessarily think they're too attractive, but they have to love them. Yeah, get some. Din din dam, very din dam. She's off. And just pull it out. I think we have everything disconnected. If I'm, my memory is serving me. Yep. It's out. Wires disconnected. Oh yeah. So here's our current setup. I just uh, yeah, I have my church pants on, so I apologize if you can see. Unfortunately, 3D machines 
doesn't sell uh, underwear, but um, <laughs> you may be able to see that. Yeah, my church pants though. So I have this engine on a dirt bike stand. I didn't want to drain the oil in the mower because mowers just have absolutely terrible draining systems. It gets everywhere. So it's better if we just have this situation. This is my first time ever using a dirt bike stand and a 2x4 in an oil can, but I like that. Yes, I know these aren't hardened sockets, but YOLO, you know. That's really clean. Not a lot of oil in that. So now we'll be able to... I already adjusted the valves on this, but I'm sure we'll check them out again when we're done. Because we're going to put a new uh, head gasket in this thing as well. Things you got to come apart to get to where we want to get it to. So. Gonna go on there for me, really? Yeah, you will. Wow, you really have to take that off. That's interesting. I should have taken the spark plug out, but I cheated and I didn't take the spark plug out. I am a rascal, I know. There we go. Got two different push rods. Got our steel one and got our aluminum one. They should put steel for both of them, but whatever. Not even seating well. Look at that. I can twist it with my thumb. I guess you don't. Oh, nope, we have blow by. Check it out right here. You can see this, the head gasket here, looks really good from this side, but right here, I'm assuming that once we take that off, we'll see a couple chunks missing because there's oil like shooting into the push rod area here. I just put the push rods up here and I rolled them back and forth and neither one of them were bent. So we don't have to worry about that. That's not gonna cause us smoking, but that's just, that could cause some other issue. So the engine is about two pounds lighter because we had got rid of the oil. Now we gotta tear this entire bottom portion here off. The whole bottom of the engine has to come off in order to get to our piston slash connecting rod. Yes, yeah, sir. Just gonna hit these off. this so that that way my when I do throw this on because it's not a hardened one you know what we're gonna get legit here I'm gonna get the hardened one out check that out 
No, my battery's dead. There's, a, there's a red RTV on here, so somebody has been in here before. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. If you guys don't have one of these things, you guys need to get this. Go to Machine Mark. Click at the gear page that this thing has saved my life so many times. It's made by Bosch, 12 volt. Thing fits in your pocket and puts out crazy, crazy power. And you can slam it around like that. Well, that turned out pretty good. One hit. First try. Yeah, I see somebody's been in here. It's red. Red stuff is no good. You can see there's a, a timing mark right there, and there's a timing mark right there on the crankshaft. Sorry, the battery died. But we just took the gear out. I'm going to take the flywheel off. So I originally adapted all my air tools to a large line, and I don't have my big air compressor here still. So, we we have this mess right here. <laughs> Come on, Husky! Oh. Yeah, it'll take it off. You just got to put it, you got to put the gun in the right direction there, Dalton. Okay, what are the chances that this flywheel coming off here without having to break anything. Swap there. A little bit of pressure in here. I managed to get it, all I did was put another punch behind the flywheel there. And then literally didn't even have to tap it as hard as I was hitting it. And the flywheel kind of just moved, so it probably is off. Yep. Um, baby. There we go. So check this out. Here's the flywheel key and it's literally just sheared right in half there. That's extremely interesting. You have some debris there. Not too bad I guess. <laughs> Wowzers. Okay, that's cool. I was looking up torque specs for this, and this does have two different size nuts or bolts. So that's kind of neat. And I've taken push mowers apart, and they've always been the same size, but these bolts, once I get them off, I'll show you. They're two different sizes, though. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, got it. I have the bottom screw out, working on the top one right now. It's really finicky. I think I got it. Got it. That dropping noise is, is good, a good thing. There it is. Oh wow, that looks really nice. Very good. Okay, now we should be able to 
push this on up through without scratching anything. There we go. I have to say, you guys, I am very impressed with this engine. I never knew these engines were built as well as they are. But this engine is incredible. Runs on half of a key, blown out head gasket, and all we have is a smoking situation. We don't have oil on the filter. We don't have anything else wrong other than it's smoking a little bit. It runs. And it fires right up. So you guys probably aren't going to like how I'm going to do the piston rings. I can't find my uh, ring remover, uh, my pliers. So I ordered another pair. They're on their way, but I'm not waiting because we got stuff to do. But before I do that, let's check out this head gasket. There's, there's going to be a chunk missing behind that. I can tell you that right now. Wow. Let's see. It's really not bad. Wish I had the I wish I had a third hand. There you go. One. Uno. And they were they were like 120 degrees apart, the these two. But this one is opened closer to that, which it shouldn't be, but hey, I'm sure these things spin pretty good after the amount of times they go up and down. Bam. This is really, really clean. Dirty there, so that's where our blow by is happening. Clean, clean, clean. This piston is looks like it's in really good shape. Way better shape than I thought. Yeah, no deep. I mean, there's there's the deepest one, but it's not really bad. Wow, this thing keeps on getting lighter and lighter. I don't know if that's a good thing. It, actually, it's it's a bad thing, folks. You just want to get to the point where you're putting gas into something. You never want to get to this point. Change some oil here and there, but you don't want to do this. <laughs> I like putting gas in it. I like putting oil in it. Other than that. You know, it's it's excessive. How's that? So here's our top one. We're gonna check the clearance on this. It's gotta it's gotta be out of clearance for it to have blow by. I just wanna see how big the gap really is because I have another piston over here that may be the same one. And if we can get by by using its piston rings, then that's a plus. Square all the way around. 
it's, it's pretty square right there. Well, we're double what it's supposed to be. That's a point zero two five. I believe that gap is supposed to be anywhere from three thousandths to ten thousandths. Twenty five is it goes in at like nothing. So let's go up to thirty. We're going to go up to thirty six here because I can't find the ten. If I could find the ten, then I would go thirty five. But we can't find the ten right now, so I'm going thirty six. There's a little bit of resistance there, so I'd say we're somewhere around 36 there. Let's try these guys. Oh, wow! That looks incredible! Oh, let's see. It looks way better, you guys. I got a sixth thou right here. Six thou's goes through. Eight thou's goes through. That's pretty nice right there, and that's in spec. Sweet, so we can use those. That's killer. That's awesome, so we'll use these off that piston. We have this piston here, which we can compare which one's better, which one's worse. And I'd say this one's way better. Yeah, this one's better. It's got more carbon on it, more carbon buildup, but this one is nicer. So we'll send this and its rings. So this is the cleanest I could get the piston with a plastic brush and some brake cleaner. So it's way better. I understand that the top is dirty. However, uh, the, the top's always gonna get dirty. I'm just gonna start putting these rings back on. Lubing them up with some oil here. Let's get everything nice and saturated. Getting them out, scratching it up. It's just you gotta use your leg or my knee. Ah, there's my fingertips. Ah, there we go. So there's the top. Set that one about there. We'll set that one about there. 120. So that's about there, there. 
Now we're just going to take this guy off the rod. And then this guy's going to be retired. Probably enough. I just have to cover it with my finger so it doesn't end up in my eye. There you go. There's the first one. I got rid of the rings. We're not going to use those, so I just threw them out. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. We'll pry it up, and I'll put my finger over it so it doesn't go in my eye. Come on, baby. Instead. Open wide. Same thing here. Got to take that guy right back and up. Of course, as soon as I take it away from the camera, it wants to go. That's the top, that's the top. There we go, that's how it should slide in there. Now we're all set. Put our new, <laughs> our used rings in. Put our rings back on there. Send her home. I have to thank Morgan S. for sending these gloves. I'm still using them. Uh, you sent them a long time ago. And I'm still using them, so thank you very much. If anybody else wants to send me uh, hand condoms or anything else, feel free to go to my P.O. box in the description below and send some. Probably should get a little sticky here. Stickier, how's that? This isn't this sticky, but this isn't necessarily the stickiest since I just wiped everything off with that. Stickier! Okay. Slam this guy into there. Time to reef this down. I swore this is the. You can see how I kind of mix those two up. Okay, so we want to squeeze that down really good. That's not anywhere near where we want it, but I kind of want this lower so I'm not fighting too much further. Squeeze it nice and. I'll leave a link to this stuff in the comment section below, in the description as well. So that's how we're going to send it. After, of course, we get slippery. So I'm pushing the rod out of the way so it doesn't hit the crankshaft as I push it down. Did you like the sound of that? I did. I like it a lot.
Alright, there's 160 on the big one. That's 160 on the small one. So now we're going to bring that up to 260. Two forty, two sixty. There you go. That's all set. Wow, it even feels good. Look at that. Take off our half homemade, half original gasket here. I don't think they cleaned this up very good when they did it the last time. Get a good look now, because it ain't going to look like that in a second. Ta-da! Getting sloppy. This one you can't really screw up. It's got, it's got a tooth there to catch. Big head in the way right now. Okay, here's our mark right here. Here's our mark right there. Let's see how we did. Not too shabby. A couple of things off. Not too shabby, only a te couple teeth off. Bingo. So we're gonna go with this stuff. This says it's oil resistance. So that's what, exactly what we're dealing with. Let's see. Wow, it's not even hard at the top. Keep your minds out of the gutter, folks. If my battery dies, I'm putting this onto there. And I already lubed the shaft, you guys saw that. That surface is cleaned. The air compressor that I'm using is insanely small. It's going to run the entire time. I actually turned it off to get this shot right here. So here's our new ad gasket in there. I'll throw this on. And then I'll have to clean uh, the other side of the mating surfaces the uh, where all the valves are kept and stuff like that. Hopefully this fits. Yep, that works. Take the spark plug out. I'm going to reseat the valves. As you guys saw earlier, the one valve wasn't wasn't seating very well at all because I could spin it with my thumb. And that's a lot of spring to be pushing against that and you being able to mess with it with your thumb. Before I do that, though, since my air compressor quit, we'll go ahead and clean this up. So 
I clean I clean the rest of that surface off. Like I said, my air compressor's small. Now I'm just gonna push these down with my hands, I think. I think I can get that right out. Those keepers. Or no, they don't have keepers. It's just you push it out of the way. Right? No keepers. I like that better. Do that by hand all day long. Oh, that one's got a little bit of resistance to it. Ooh. Interesting. Come on, honey. There you go. That definitely could use a good cleaning. Uh, the mating surface there, though, looks really good. This one, you can see, this is the one I could spit with my thumb. It's just, it's shot. It's dirty. It's filthy. She needs a good scrubbing. Much cleaner. Same with this one. better. So now we'll lap these in so they seat very well. We've got our tool right here. These things love to just dry out and crack. It's nuts. They're, they're like a consumable. You'd think they'd last a long time, but they really don't. Fun part's always trying to get him to stick. That's the real fun part. Son of a nutcracker. There we go. Oh, okay. She's ready to send on that one. I'm interested to see if I need to use my tool in order to put these springs back on. So if we have this oriented right, that's going to go on this guy. Okay. This guy's going to go here. Let's see if i am got my He-Man woman hater strength. Yeah, it should be possible. Yeah, that ain't too bad. Now for the best part, gentlemen, we're going to get some head here. Put our push rods back in there. Yes. Slide this guy in here. Gasket's in place. Everything's cleaned up. Let's talk to myself a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? See how many we lost. Uh oh. Look at 
Looks like we're being pretty responsible here. Oh man, we didn't even lose one. It's no fun. Okay, who am I gonna take off now? Grabbing the impact. Dang it, I wasn't supposed to put the spark plug in. Snugs. Now we can do the old torque on them. Maybe we'll do this once the mower's on. Whoop. Okay, maybe we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. One, two, three is up here, four is down there. I don't think it's going to kill it. Four. Five. Okay. Once over. I put the spark plug in, and you better bet your bottom dollar that I use the impact for that. I can't put the valve cover on yet, so our next little dilemma here, well, the next procedure is getting this to balance on the crankshaft. There we go. I'm going to put the flywheel on. I showed you guys the flywheel key. I'll show you what the real one's supposed to look like. It's funny because I think this is like a Tecumseh thing. But if you look, see how they both kind of look similar? This one's sheared, this one's uh, factory, and I'll show you what this one's supposed to look like. That's what that's supposed to look like. It's supposed to just be a solid round like that, and it's sheared halfway. So the timing was slightly off, as you can imagine. So there's our new guy. Make the more run nice. Sometimes some of the magnets come off of here and none of them are loose so that's good. Get some of the remaining debris out of here. Stab this guy on.
think I'm going to start with the exhaust. Cable, let's try not to twist you up. A little flick and switch. So, so on this, uh, this controls both the throttle and the choke, so you have to adjust this one line correctly otherwise you're not going to have choke or you're not going to be able to get your full you know range of motion and that's where we need it right there and you got to look what you're doing just put it in there if it goes it goes if it doesn't it doesn't do the old swap around actually that's probably the wrong that one goes there here we go so you don't even got to look they put those different shapes in there you're just like a five-year-old or probably a three or two two-year-old just smash it in there until it works. There it goes. All the wires are hooked up. All we gotta do is put oil in the thing and put our plastics back on. This gasket is extremely clean and extremely nice. That's going to seal really well. Sorry you guys, I skipped a step with you. I just put the shroud on. It was kind of finicky anyway, so. You, you didn't miss anything other than some curse words.
I'll disconnect this spark plug wire. I don't want it to fire right away. I have probably about 90% of the oil in it. I'm just going to turn it over, get all the oil into all the nooks and crannies. After taking off a few bolts, you can see there's the flywheel notch there, and then in the shadow here, of course, there's where the where it's actually supposed to be. So yep, we sheared it, and I don't know why that is, other than that I didn't put enough. Maybe my air compressor didn't put enough torque on it, and it just wasn't enough. Huh? I bet you that's what it was. As you can see, I have the flywheel off here. I found this heavy-duty key. Hopefully it fits. I haven't even tried it yet. It'll fit like that. I don't know if it's probably too tall though. See, I ain't gonna do it like that, but maybe if I put this on after. modify this key. Third time at that. three pieces of plastic on you guys will get that uh, all the links will be in the description and the comment section feel free to go to machinemerch.com or 3dmachines.co get something froggy fresh or super fly we're having a gopro giveaway right now so you get something gnarly see you guys later